All right, so let's say that you are one of those supposedly 50 million plus PC gamers who, according to NVIDIA, is still rocking a four or even five or more year old mid-tier GPU. Is it now finally the time to upgrade? And there's a little personal background for this too, because my girlfriend, she's still rocking a 1660 Ti in her gaming system. Actually, probably it's probably exactly the same card as this EVGA card. And we were wondering a little while ago, is now finally the time to look into upgrading her? And that's where the RTX 5060 Ti story sort of comes into the equation and how we wanted to address this video. This video is all about that upgrade path. Are people who are sort of holding on to these older GPUs with all of their strength, is this going to be enough to draw them away from those towards a new card like the RTX 5060 Ti. To do that, we're retesting cards going back four GPU generations, back to the six-year-old GTX 1660 Ti, along with the RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 3060 Ti to see what an upgrade could get you in a best case scenario. There's also a collection of other cards that you might be cross shopping to. Anyways, let's start right at the top. The 5060 Ti has two versions, one eight gig and the other 16 gig, which are priced about $50 apart. But given the current situation in the market, we all know that most models will cost a whole lot more. And look, Nvidia will also point towards the RTX 4060 Ti and say, hey, look, we're charging less for a 16 gigabyte card. But the 4060 Ti 16 gig should have never been at its $500 price point in the first place. There's also the vanilla RTX 5060 that's going to be coming sometime in May and for $300 or whatever it ends up being on retailer shelves. It's supposed to represent a, I guess, sort of sweet spot for gamers on a budget. But we'll really have to see about that since it's got just eight gigs of memory. And I also wanted to address the elephant in the room here. And that is why are we only focusing on the 16 gig RTX 5060 Ti. And that's simply because no matter how much I tried, I couldn't convince a board partner or Nvidia to send us an eight gig card. There was serious headwinds whenever I tried to do exactly that. The weird thing is that supposedly both are going to be on sale at around the same time. So it's almost like Nvidia sort of tacitly admitting that the eight gig card should not exist. But anyways, I also wanted to talk about what is going to happen to get these cards to Nvidia supposedly MSRP because this, this is the PNY, what I would call it like the tariff edition. It's a completely basic card that's actually a bit less than two slots high and comes with an almost barren ultra short PCB. Honestly, you can see what's happening here. Board partners are going to be struggling to hit MSRP and there's going to be some sacrifices to get to the lowest possible price. And yes, PNY lists this as an OC version, but it only runs about 4% faster than stock. So that won't impact its standing whatsoever in our charts. And that's something I wanted to mention because this is the GPU that we're going to be using for all of the testing going forward. And yet coupled with the RTX 5060 Ti's relatively low power needs, well, upgraders will love the fact that this card only needs a single eight pin power connector. No 12 pin connectors, adapters, or ridiculous dongles are needed, at least not with this card. Though the location of the connector, well, that's gonna cause maybe some nightmares for cable routing. But unfortunately that eight pin power approach, it's not going to permeate the entire RTX 5060 series lineup. There's going to be still a lot of cards like this MSI gaming trio that still use that 12 pin power connector. And speaking of power, well, it ranges from 127 watts at the low end all the way up to 175 watts in the worst case scenario at 1440p without RT enabled. But when compared to the RTX 4060 Ti, well, it's higher right across the board and it ended up averaging out at about 16 watts more. And that shouldn't come as any surprise since the RTX 5000 series is evidently process limited. So Nvidia needed to push more power for higher frequencies and the end result, well, it typically ends up being a wash in the performance per watt metric. But move to a comparison at 1080p and against previous generation Nvidia cards alongside a few AMD GPUs like the RX 9070 and 7700 XT, the upgrade story gets a bit more interesting. No, it doesn't sit power like the RTX 4060 Ti did, but if you have a good older power supply running your GTX 1660 Ti or RTX 2060 Super, this card won't require an upgrade, at least not on that front. Increasing the resolution to 1440p and power 
power needs do trend upwards, but the RTX 5060 Ti is still one of the least power hungry cards in this chart, whereas the AMD cards, well, they need a whole lot more. So I guess that sets the stage for everything, but the most important thing for anybody who's on like a four or five year upgrade cycle for their GPUs is, of course, how much performance an upgrade will actually give you. And that, of course, is going to be the sort of meat and potatoes of this review. But before that, I need to get everybody accustomed with the charts that we're using here. First of all, all of them have two sides, so you can easily compare performance at two different resolutions at a single glance, with 1080p on the left and 1440p on the right. The order of GPUs won't change either, so it's easier to follow along. The RTX 5070 and RX 9070 are here to represent what a higher level card can give you, while the 7700 XT and RTX 4070 make an appearance as potential used market alternatives to the RTX 5060 Ti. And things start off pretty good for it in Alan Wake, with frame rates that are within spitting distance of the 4070 at both resolutions, and a significant jump upwards from what the RTX 4060 Ti gives you. But like I said before, it is an RTX 3000 or 4,000 buyers who would be looking at an upgrade right now. It's those RTX 2000 and 1660 users, and for them, this new card gives at least double, and in some cases, more than triple the performance at least in this game. The same thing goes for Black Myth Wukong versus older generations with the RTX 5060 Ti getting comparatively huge frame rate uplifts over the 4060 Ti when you compare that card to the 3060 Ti. And I think that's a critical distinction here. While the 4060 Ti was a pathetic card that offered at most a 15% boost over its predecessor in this game, the 5060 Ti gets more than a 20% increase in both averages and 1% lows. And based on these numbers in more recent popular games, I can completely understand why people with a 16 series or 2060 series card might have held off until now for an upgrade. While the RTX 3060 Ti was a pretty big jump forward, the 4060 Ti didn't deliver the performance to justify its price, especially with the 16 gigabyte version. But now, well, the 5060 Ti 16 gig might look pretty tempting. And yet in most situations, I have to say the RTX 5070 and RX 9070 absolutely justify their higher prices. On the other hand, I'd almost certainly buy an RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte over a used RX 7700 XT, since that card's still going for anywhere between 450 and 550 US dollars on the used market these days. Then again, in a game like CS2, a 2060 Super or 1660 Ti are still perfectly fine in most cases, though jumping up to something better will certainly help reaction times. There are also some games that see huge benefits from moving to the RTX 5000 series, and Cyberpunk is one of those. While the game is pretty well optimized across every class of GPU, the RTX 5060 Ti is able to narrowly push ahead of the RTX 4070 at 1080p, and then leverage its 16 gigabyte frame buffer to outpace it by even more at 1440p. Then again, this is one of the few areas where the 16 gigabyte RTX 4060 Ti was also able to distinguish itself from the 8 gigabyte 3060 Ti. And yet those situations are few and far between, since most of the time the 5060 Ti is a good 10 to 15% behind the 4070, and yet it still retains a pretty good lead over the 4060 Ti, especially at 1440p. Doom also shows us the issues with older cards from the 1660 Ti's generation. Most of them were working with just 8 gigs of memory or less, and in this case, it wasn't even able to play the game at the preset we're using. And yet, while this memory shortfall isn't entirely detrimental to its performance in every situation, the GTX 1660 Ti's ability to deliver playable frame rates will continue to go down as newer games tend to gobble up a lot more VRAM. And even though it might not seem like a quantum leap forward versus the previous generation, the RTX 5060 Ti does feel like a logical upgrade path for people who might have skipped the 3000 and 4000 series altogether. But there are also some games that highlight some growing concerns a lot of people have with game engine limitations, specifically with UE4 and UE5. Hogwarts is a great example of this. It feels like no matter how much graphics horsepower is thrown at it, performance feels about the same across the board. That's because constant stutters impact the 1% lows and that in effect 
drags down the whole experience, with the RTX 5060 Ti feeling no faster than the 2060 Super. Luckily, there are still game engines that do it the right way. And when you hit one of those, the RTX 5060 Ti can literally surge ahead of its predecessor. Again, though, we have to put this into perspective. It's not doing the same thing that the RTX 3060 did with its flexing over the 2060 Super. But about 20% at 1080p is still a pretty good result given the fact there's no process node benefit going on here. There also still seems to be some fundamental issues going on behind the scenes with NVIDIA and driver optimizations to the point where in Black Ops 6, there's next to no performance benefit over the previous generation. And that's really worrying when you consider this is one of the most popular games around right now. Meanwhile, the Nvidia stagnation has allowed AMD cards to really run away with things here at both resolutions. And that lack of consistency hits in Spider-Man Remastered 2, with the 5060 struggling to pull ahead of even the RTX 3060 Ti at 1080p. And yeah, sure, things do get better at 1440p, but not by all that much, with there being less than a 10% performance uplift against the RTX 4060 Ti. This literal performance whiplash continues into Rainbow Six, where we're right back to seeing the new card get a pretty substantial win at 1440p and at 1080p, while also staying well ahead of the RX 7700. Then again, paying the extra money for a 5070 or 9070 does get you a whole lot more performance, especially at higher resolutions. Moving on to Starfield, and we're right back to minuscule frame rate differences between the 5060 Ti and 4060 Ti. And I think this is what's gonna frustrate so many people. The 5060 Ti can be really, really good if you stumble across the right game and then in other titles, everything comes crashing right back down to earth with only 10% better performance. It all comes down to what game you're playing because this really isn't an across the board, vastly superior card. In Warhammer, it's evidently able to stretch its legs way, way better than it did in Starfield, Spider-Man, and some other games. I just wish there was more consistency because if there was, the RTX 5060 Ti would be a whole lot easier to recommend. Now, before we move on to ray tracing, I need to mention that most of these GPUs, especially the older ones, simply won't run RT at high detail settings without some form of help. And I don't recommend reducing in-game settings to turn on ray tracing either, since that completely defeats the purpose. So we're running all of these tests with the highest level of DLSS and FSR enabled with the quality settings selected, but with frame generation turned off. And after seeing the raster numbers, these should come as absolutely no surprise, since they align perfectly with the last tests. The 5060 Ti is a step upwards from the previous generation, of course, and at least it'll allow you to play with RT enabled, unlike the GTX 1660 Ti and the first generation RTX cards, which either get their frame rates hammered downwards or simply don't support it. On the other hand, some games like Avatar allow you to run ray tracing on GTX class cards now, though not very well. But these results also show the RTX 5060 Ti being no faster than the 4060 Ti. And then things get flipped on their heads once again with the new card being in a whole other performance dimension in Black Myth Wukong. And this points towards there being two possibilities in this game at least. Maybe the 5000 series got driver optimizations, the other cards simply didn't, or something within the game engine itself sees benefits from Nvidia's latest architecture. And I really thought that same situation would repeat itself in Cyberpunk 2, but it didn't. While the RTX 5060 Ti does make a good case for itself as an upgrade path for RTX 2060 Super and GTX 1660 Ti users, it's not all that much better than its predecessor here. And my critique about what kind of embarrassment Hogwarts is, well, it stays around with RT enabled. There's literally no performance difference between the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 5070 because of the game engine's inability to deliver consistent frame times. Spider-Man also falls into this category at 1080p with the 5060 Ti actually matching the 5070. And if anything, that points towards there being an optimization problem in the game or with Nvidia's drivers. It's simply that clear. Luckily, 1440p drags everyone's butts out of the fire with the Ti getting very good results. So I guess with all that out of the way, the biggest question for the RTX 5060 Ti is this. 
Is this a viable upgrade solution for people like a lot of you guys and me who might want to upgrade their 60 class GPUs from quite a few generations ago? And the answer to that is actually yes, but at the same time, there are a ton of roadblocks in this card's way. The first, of course, is pricing. NVIDIA can call this a $430 GPU all they want, but the reality will be way different. I mean, I bought my 1660 Ti for $350 Canadian before taxes, which is actually a bit less than a directly converted MSRP. Based on current trends with the RTX 5070 cards hitting almost a thousand dollars here or sometimes even more i'll be lucky to find a 5060 ti for 700 bucks and we'll just have to see how this really all shakes out in the coming days and weeks and months but as somebody who really wants to upgrade one of my gaming pcs to a current generation gpu it's a little bit depressing right because like even for a 16 gig card, which is already a huge upgrade or the six gigabyte card I've got in my fiance system right now, paying $700 Canadian is just simply not going to happen. And, and sure, I can save a few bucks, I'm sure, by going with the eight gig version of this card, but that isn't gonna happen either because there's no way I'm gonna be paying this kind of price for a 60 series GPU in 2025 with eight gigs of memory. And look, neither should you. The other issue is consistency. There are a few key titles where the 5060 Ti's performance just dropped off a cliff and it was barely able to beat the 4060 Ti. And that dragged its overall numbers down with it being at most 17% faster once the dust settled. But for the people on three, four, or even five year upgrade cycles, a comparison against the 4060 Ti, well, it doesn't even really matter. What will matter is getting double the frame rates of a 2060 Super or triple a GTX 1660 Ti's performance. And in the end, this GPU actually poses more questions than it actually answers. And we're gonna have to wait for a bunch of those answers in the next little while. Things like pricing, how it compares against what AMD has coming in the competition space, so the RX 9060 and RX 9060 XT, and so on and so forth. But look, until that point, maybe I will make some kind of decision in my upgrade story. And maybe you guys will too. Until that point, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.